Let's continue our journey looking at linear functions on section 5.7, scatter plot and trend lines. Our objectives today is to write an equation of a trend line and of the line of best fit. And secondly, to use a trend line and a line of best fit to make predictions. This happens like in this particular situation here where we um, are looking at albums downloaded to CDs sold and the number of albums downloaded per year and the number of CDs sold per year kind of looking at are they related do they uh, have a relationship between them and we plot something this out it, it's not just a, a linear relationship but it does create um, a scatter plot so let's look at different things things like that you can determine whether two sets of numerical data are related because we're looking about their relation by graphing them as ordered pairs. If the two sets of data are related, you may be able to use a line to estimate the predicted values. Um, and we've been doing a lot of that, but um, we're going to be using a scatter plot this time. A scatter plot is a graph that relates two different sets of data by displaying them as ordered pairs. Most scatter plots are in the first quadrant of the coordinate plane because we're looking at positive numbers. You can use a scatter plot to find trends in the data. A scatter plot below show the three types of relationships that two sets of data may have. Like for instance, this data would show um, a positive correlation happening. As the data is plotted, we can see the information going up. Um, the second graph, um, we can see that the relationship is going down. We call that a negative correlation. And then there's somewhere we can't even draw a line at all, like in our third graph. And we would call that there's no correlation. We cannot see any patterns, any trends happening here. So we'd call that no correlation. Well, we're going to make a scatter plot and describe its correlation, either positive um, or negative or none. The table shows the altitude of an airplane and the temperature outside the plane. Okay, this relationship is not linear, but when we plot it out, it can happen. So when we make a scatter plot of the data. I'm erasing this. That's weird. There we go. We're going to treat the data as ordered pairs. So here's a point 0, 0,59. Here's a point 559.2. Here's the point. So if we plot all those points, um, we can see our graph. And it is a bit of a scatter plot in this situation. Um, what type of relationship does the scatter plot show? We can see it does show a bit of a negative correlation um, on this one. As the altitude um, increases, as the plane altitude increases, the temperature decreases. This is your turn. Okay, you want to grab some graph paper and you're going to look at each point and go ahead and plot them. And the main thing you're looking for is plotting them and determine its correlation. Press pause and give it a try. All right, you can see how it plays out. I'm not sure if you caught the second question, but it says consider the population of a city and the number of letters in the name of the city. Um, would this be a positive, negative, or no correlation? This actually would have no correlation. Um, we can kind of predict that anyway. The length of the city's name has nothing to do with how many people are in it. When two sets of data have a positive or negative correlation, you can use a trend line to show the correlation. And I've been drawing that in blue. Um, a trend line is that line on the scatter plot. Uh, it's getting us close. I'm going down the middle as close as possible. You can use a trend line to estimate the value between two known data values to predict it. And notice I'm kind of creating um, a linear relationship. Uh, I'm drawing a linear line um, in this situation. Um, interpolation, here's another thing. Um, interpolation is an estimating the value between the two known values. So it's looking in here. And um, extrapolation, that's looking at um, the values outside the range. So that's looking out here looking at the information that is not in the line so looking how far every way everything is outside write an equation of a trend line okay this one's um, we're going to use some of the stuff we've already known and some of the stuff we just looked at we've got to make a scatter plot of the data at the right considering the coordinates okay plotting them each we can take a look and see how that looks okay make a scarlet plot, and then we make a trend line as best as we can to estimate the two points of it. Um, as the age increases in months, the weight then increases. That makes sense. Two points in the trend line are these two right here, 
and I'm going to write an equation of the trend line and I'm going to use those two points. So I'm going to press, press pause and work out the math on this one. Um, and you can take a look. All right, first you can see I took my two points and I subtracted out trying to find the difference, find a ratio of rise to run to find my slope. So I know my slope m equals 5.2. I'm going to press pause again and continue solving the other pieces. All right, so you can see um, once I knew the slope and I knew one of the points on the graph, uh, this guy right here, I was able to use my point slope form to find my equation. And so here's my equation of the line, which represents my slope playing out and my y-intercept. And now knowing this, I can go on to step three and I can plug something in here. Estimate the weight of a seven month old panda. So I can play this out by determining y equals 5.2. And if the weight is seven, minus my my intercept you can see that y equals 32.7 pounds why don't you give it a try i'm going to make a scatter plot of this information considering the coordinates so I'll grab some graph paper i want you to draw a trend line um, and then go ahead and write its equation so a couple things scatter plot and draw a trend line and you're going to write an equation. And then you're going to go ahead and use this information to solve this question. So press pause. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so as you plot it out, um, there's the line of best fit right there. Your equation is y equals 2.23x plus 8.8. .8, and it's about 24.4 inches. Now, do you think you can use your model to extrapolate the body length of a three-year-old panda? They're saying no, an adult panda does not grow at the same rate as a young panda. I can imagine they would grow at a, at a less of a rate, um, similar to you and I. The trend line that shows the relationship between two sets of data most accurately is called the line of best fit. So that line I'm drawing is called the line of best fit. A graphing calculator computes the equation of the line by using this line of best fit. And it also uses a method called linear regression. Um, the graphing calculator also gives you the correlation coefficient, which is represented by R. It's a number that's going to show up from negative 1 to 1 that tells you how closely the equation models the data. And this is an interesting thing. So it, you're looking about how close the equation represents the information. The nearer the R is to 1 or negative 1, the more closely the data cluster around the line of best fit. Okay, so here's the thing to keep an eye on right here. If R is near one, if it's near one, the data line close to the line of best fit with a positive slope. So, um, so it's going to be positive one. If R is near negative one, the data um, lie close to the line of best fit with a negative slope. Okay, so what this is telling us is basically how close the information is to the line of best fit, how close it is. And we'll play around with that a little bit. So like on this one, problem front three, finding the line of best fit. It's so great, a calculator actually pulls this through for you. So if you follow these steps and do these particular things, clicking the buttons, putting in the information, putting the table together, um, your calculator will give you this screen, which will give you, uh, and, and you tell it, I want it in slope intercept form. It'll give you the slope. It'll give you where the Y intercept occurs on the graph. Um, and of course, it's a decimal because the information's all over the place and it's using um, the line of best fit and also gives you the correlation coefficient. Now, if you take a look, you can see how, look at the information here, how close it is to one. That is pretty close to one. We can use um, our graph then to uh, predict the cost of attending college in 2012, 2013 by using our information, just plugging it and using the equation for this. Now, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of this. Uh, maybe we'll practice this out. It'd be great. Causation. 
Now, causation, another interesting word here. Now, if you look at the kind of the root here, cause, it's happening here. Cause, causation is when a change in one quantity causes a change in a second quantity. A correlation between two quantities does not always imply a causation. Okay, now let's see how that plays out here. Identify whether relationships are, oh, here's a fun word, causal, 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 cause, okay, causal. In the following situations, is there likely to be a correlation? If so, does the correlation reflect a casual relationship, a causal, it's not casual, casual, no, it's causal relationship, explain. So first, let's look to see if there's likely to be a correlation. The number of loaves of bread baked and the amount of flour used. Is there a correlation between these two? Yes. Um, is it a casual relationship? Let's look. There's a positive correlation, so we can indicate, you know, um, as one goes up, so does the other one. This would be positive. And as the number of loaves of bread bake increases, the amount of flour used also increases. So this would determine it as being casual. The number of mailboxes and the number of firefighters in the city. Okay, this is an interesting one because there's likely to be a positive correlation because both the mailboxes and the number of firefighters tend to increase as the population of a city increases. So more firefighters, more mailboxes. Okay, makes sense, a positive correlation. However, installing more mailboxes will not cause the number of firefighters to increase. Um, so there, there's no causal relationship in this one. So you're looking for a couple different things in all these relationships. You're looking, uh, does the, the situation have a correlation, positive, negative, or none? And then does that correlation reflect a causal relationship? And I want you to try it out on this one. So take a look and see how well you kind of wrap your head in some on this new vocabulary. Press pause. All right, let's take a look at these two here. The cost of a family's vacation and the size of their house. Is there a correlation? Probably there might be, you know. Um, it will be a positive correlation, probably a scatter plot playing out here, but it is not casual because um, a more expensive vacation does not cause a family to own a bigger house necessarily. And for B, um, when you're exercising, it, there would be a positive correlation happening here. Um, and it would also be a causal relationship. The more time you spend exercising, the more cas uh, calories you burn. All right, we got some funky new vocabulary here. Just continue to use it. Continue to look it over so that you can get comfortable with it. All right, I think that's it. It is. All right, I'm going to go buy a gerbil and paint its toes. Actually, it doesn't have toes. <laughs>